A state lawmaker in Missouri just proposed the Missouri Anti-Corruption Act, and that bill would, quote, put an end to unlimited gifts from lobbyists by restoring campaign contribution limits and also close other loopholes that led to corruption. So this is the first anti-corruption bill that we've had proposed in a while. In fact, I can't remember the last time we spoke about uh, at a at a lower level, so state level or local level people proposing bills like this. And are you ready for this? It was proposed by a Republican, Republican Robert Schaaf. He says the following, quote, As a member of the Missouri Senate, I can legally accept gifts from lobbyists unlimited in number and in value. Fine wine, expensive meals, tickets to the World Series, whatever is on offer. And if I were seeking re-election, I could also accept unlimited campaign contributions. Without violating the law, a single person, union, or corporation could write my campaign a check larger than most Missouri families make in an entire year. In fact, I would probably need to seek out such checks, checks at least in the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars, if I wanted to win my election. So this guy's putting it all out there. He's telling it exactly uh, like it is, and of course, behind the scenes, all the other lawmakers are like, shh, don't give away our secrets! We don't actually have good ideas, we're propped up by corporate money. He continues, quote, money buys favors. Here's how this works. First, you establish yourself as a reliable supporter of an elected official, sending big checks her way to support her re-election campaign. Then, when a bill that would hurt your client's bottom line is referred to her committee, you ask her to quietly kill it by refusing to give it a hearing. Though she's made no promise to do you such a favor, she knows in the back of her mind that you will likely stop giving her checks if she doesn't. She doesn't know enough about the bill to decide whether it would hurt Missourians for for her to kill it, but she does know uh, that that's losing your support. And it would hurt her chances for re-election. So she kills the bill for you. Yeah, um, this may be the single most honest politician in the United States of America. And I reiterate, he is a Republican. So what all of us should do is stand up and uh, speak out and pat this guy on the back and say, all credit goes to Republican Robert Schaaf uh, of Missouri. And I think what you'll find is the more you look into this, Jenk has referred to this time and time again when discussing Wolfpack. He says that uh, the smaller you go, so instead of looking at federal politicians, national politicians, the the lower you go down the totem pole or down the line and when you get to state legislators and then you go further down to uh, local legislators you find that those people are much more representative of their constituents and there's much less big money corrupting those people so they're much more likely to tell the truth about the situation he said that he was surprised that a lot of people uh, who are local legislators state legislators they would have a meeting with you like, to them, it'd be like, oh, you want to meet on Wednesday? Great, let's do it. No problem. Now, try to do that with a senator. <laughs> if you're not incredibly rich, that's just not going to happen. So what we see is, at a, a lower level, democracy still exists to a certain extent. And that's essentially the brilliance of uh, the state-by-state -state convention, the panic button that the Founding Fathers put in the Constitution, to allow us to essentially subvert Congress, subvert the Senate, and just go around and go state by state to try to get enough states to do a constitutional convention to get an amendment that we could all agree on. And that's the move at this point. Now, the massive caveat to this story, while I still give uh, Robert Shea full credit here, he did a fantastic job, what he might not understand is that it doesn't matter what kind of laws he passes at the local level or the state level. Because the Supreme Court has ruled that money uh, is speech. So you can't legislate uh, or make rules that affect money in politics at any level. If you interpret their uh, ruling in the most direct way, which is the way that they want you to interpret it, which means, uh, hey, you're just not allowed to put limits because it's, it's regulating speech and you can't regulate speech under the First Amendment. 
well then it doesn't matter what legislation you pass, it's automatically null and void. Because the Constitution overrides any, uh, even federal laws, but definitely state laws and local laws. So while he means well and he's doing the right thing, anybody who challenges this law, if it were to pass, which it probably won't, but if anybody were to challenge it, immediately it would be struck down and uh, the precedent would be all the different Supreme Court cases, whether it's Buckley versus Vallejo, Citizens United, McCutcheon, uh, Bilotti, all of them that have said money equals free speech over the years from the late 1970s and onward. So this is why, this is why the only answer is Wolfpack, by the way. The only answer, in my opinion, is a constitutional amendment. Because legislation can change. It's so easy for legislation to change with the different administrations. I mean, you could even have, for example, a law that stays on the books, but it's never enforced. <clears throat> a perfect example of that today is the anti-monopoly laws. We have laws on the books that say, you know, uh, corporations can't get too large and that you should break up the banks if they get to a certain size, and the Sherman Antitrust Act is one of them, but there's others as well, and it's just flat out not enforced. So, if you have a law, one administration to the next could just say, okay, forget it, we're going to get rid of this one, Congress can just get rid of it whenever they want, uh, so it's subject to the whims more of Congress, but it's also the case that even if they don't, let's say we get good regulation of money and politics in Congress, but they just don't enforce it, well then you're, it's still useless. So you have to go to the heart of it. It's much, much harder to ignore a constitutional amendment. Now, it's possible, but it's much, much harder. 